So let's say you're a charity mm -hmm. and you have the good fortune of having some good fortune. In other words, you have surplus funds. Mm -hmm. What is now the best way to invest those funds so that you can remain accountable to those donors and sponsors while at the same time making best use of them for your beneficiaries. It's one of the topics under discussion during the Corporate Governance Week 2016, and Professor Ho uh, Yu Ki is with us to talk a little bit about sure. what the best way to manage those funds is. First of all, Professor Ho, yes. uh, how many charities are there actually that do have surplus funds? Is this a, a common phenomenon? Oh, yes. Um, Singapore is very privileged. A lot of our charities actually do have surplus funds. And the surplus funds can run into from hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions and tens of millions of dollars too. Mm. And now clearly they need those funds, so don't stop giving. But at the same time, clearly the charities need to have the skills, need to have the expertise, yep. and also the professional network to draw on to make sure those funds are well looked after. What are the key points that people should know? I, th I think basically they need to know who are the trustees, who are the directors, who are the managers, who are the stewards there. Uh, looks after those money, and what do, do, what do they do with those money, right? Do they let them sit in the bank to earn a nominal savings interest rate, or do they put them into good use so that the returns from the money can further multiply the cost of the charities? Mm. But as soon as you say good, yep. of course, that's where the value judgment comes in. And Absolutely. So how do, you, how do you know what's good as a donor or as a sponsor? Right. So in the world of investing, uh, the risk and reward framework becomes very clear. In the sense that charity has to be very clear in their mind concerning what is an expected returns and how much risk do they want to take. So it is actually an elaborate process to invest for charity. In fact, I would dare to venture that investing, investment for charity is actually much more onerous than investing one's own money or even for a profit-making organisation to invest their funds. Is it because the donors have some emotional uh, attachment to the charity? Is that what you mean by more onerous? Well, I think the challenge many times is that the charities are actually uh, governed by volunteers. And volunteers would like to have a safe pair of hands. And once you have a safe pair of hands, you will strive for minimal returns, minimal risk too. You see? But any time when they try to be a bit more aggressive, if the returns are good, uh, that is your job. But if it doesn't, why did you invest? Hmm. Right? Why did you risk our money which was, do which was donated for the purpose of charities and you use it for investment? Yes. Right. So we are having a uh, mm. single days conference, in yes. fact, on Wednesday, the mm. 28th of September, all part of Corporate Governance Week mm. in the last week of September. Mm. Professor Ho, just finally then, what is uh, maybe one, maximum two key points that you'll mm. be making that charities really need to know about when it comes to governance? I think basically the charity has to have very clear framework, procedures and structures. It's always making sure that your house is in order with proper procedures and processes and then getting the right people and the good people. I think this is almost two conditions which ensure the investment will be taken care of in a charity. Mm, but easier said than done. Absolutely. absolutely. All right, and that's what we will be discussing. Once again, go to the website on your screen to see the full program of Corporate Governance Week 2016 and join us on Wednesday, the 28th of September in particular, for Professor Ho and a range of other speakers on the subject of governance and charities.